Are my glasses not strong enough? Why are street signs so hard to see these days? If this sounds like you, this may be because you're going through a process called myopia progression, defined by the lengthening of your eyeball. And with myopia projected to affect about 50% of the global population by 2050, I'll do my best as a currently practicing optometrist to help you understand more about why this occurs and how to prevent it. Hey yo, Antonio. There are many unrelated ways that the eyes can get worse, but let's today focus on how myopia or short-sightedness can lead to your vision getting progressively blurrier. If you want to know more about myopia, then feel free to watch this video. But as a short summary, short-sightedness or myopia means that the eyes are more able to focus on close objects as opposed to objects that are much further away. This means that for short-sighted people without glasses, generally they see things up close well to a certain point, but take it out a little bit further and you start to lose clarity. This is either because the lens of the eye is too strong, bringing the focal point forward, or the physical eye is too long. On average, a human eye is about 16.5 millimeters at birth and grows to around about 23.5 millimeters in adulthood. And although there can be slight differences from person to person, especially if a patient has myopic parents or is undergoing myopic control, a change in 0.1 millimeter of the eye can correspond to 0.24 diopters change in myopia. This can mean that for every 0.1 millimeter change in your eyes, your eyes increase by about one step in your prescription. The usual growth rates of the eye are around 0.1 millimeter per year until maturity. But for people who are undergoing myopia progression, generally they show a greater worsening of their eyes, which ranges anywhere from 0.1 to about 0.3 millimeters quicker than people who don't require glasses. Unfortunately, there is a tendency for short-sightedness to only get worse and not better. And because almost all human myopia is caused by axial length changes, monitoring these changes in length become very, very important. We can measure the axial length using optical low-spectrum reflectometry, which detects even the smallest changes in the structures of the eye. Studies have also shown that axial length measurements can be up to 10 times more sensitive in detecting myopia progression than refraction alone. Almost every human eye goes through a process called emetropization, which is when your prescription swings slightly towards hyperopia after birth and gradually flattens out to emetropia, which is when you don't need glasses. This is a model that most eyes follow, but of course, depending on your lifestyle and your genetics, that curve can do something else. The current consensus for why this happens is that for eyes that are predisposed to myopia, in other words, they carry a gene that allows the eyes to grow larger, then the curve can swing quite dramatically. Another piece of evidence is that children who spent more than three hours a day outdoors were less likely to develop myopia. And even if they did, they progressed much slower, leading to an overall reduction in the final amount of myopia. So what are some ways that will allow us to slow down or even prevent myopia? Well, for starters, we know we can't just change our genetics. Firstly, and most importantly, working distance. Increase your working distance. If you're going to watch something on your phone, watch it on your tablet instead. If you're going to watch it on your tablet, then rather watch it on your laptop instead. If you're going to watch it on your laptop, try a desktop computer. Rather than a computer, why not try a projector? The more time you spend viewing near things such as reading, watching YouTube or scrolling through TikTok, the more likely you'll progress in myopia. Secondly, try to spend more time outdoors. On several papers, it showed that children who spent more time participating in outdoor activities were less likely to develop myopia. No one really knows the mechanics of why outdoor time matters so much in stopping the lengthening of the eyeball, but some have speculated that it might be due to the amount of light available outdoors, or the fact that a typical classroom or office environment indoors can contain unusually close objects for humans to look at for hours on end. But I think outdoor time feeds onto the first point I mentioned, because outside, everything is more spread out. So your working distance is larger by default. However, with everything that's been happening right now, more people are staying indoors, and for good reason. But also at the same time, I worry about the amount of myopia progression affecting us on a global scale. 
especially when I see articles stating that in China, myopia has increased 1.4 to 3 times in 2020 compared to the previous 5 years. Emetropization is a beautifully choreographed process that involves the refractive components of the eyeball matching in sync with the growth rate of the eyeball. Outdoor time matters, so if you have any nieces or nephews that are glued to their devices, just remind them to take it easy and enjoy looking into the distance a bit more. I know what you're thinking, but Antonio, will it ever stop? Just remember, there is still very little evidence on myopia progression in adults, so whatever we discuss here is an extrapolation of the studies done with children. But in 2013, a large-scale study followed almost 500 children for up to 11 years and plotted individual function curves to analyze the stabilization of their refractive progression. It showed that the average age at which myopia stabilized was between 11 and 20 years old. The average final prescription ranged anywhere between minus 3 to minus 7. About 48% had stable myopia by age 15, 77% by age 18, and 90% by age 21. In this study, surprisingly, the ethnicity played a significant role in the final amount of myopia you ended up with, with African American children having about one less diopter than Asian children. A further analysis of the study showed that about one hour per week spent on near activities was associated with a 2% decrease odds of stable myopia at age 15. There isn't a hard stop age at which myopia stabilizes, mainly because no one has really done any large scale studies on them. Again, as I mentioned, all we're doing here is looking at the data that is available to us and extrapolating and speculating. Anecdotally, I find that most myopes stabilize around the 25 to 30 mark, but if there are any optometrists watching that want to share their experiences, then feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below. Another paper published in 2014 followed 240 myopic school children and monitored their myopia progression over 20 years. Two notable results from the study is that genetics and the time spent outdoors played a significant role again. Children who had one or more myopic parents progressed in myopia much quicker than those without myopic parents. And those that spent less than three hours outdoors a day during childhood progressed at a much quicker rate than those who did not. Further research into how we can prevent myopia have led us to create interventions that will further allow us to slow down myopia, such as low-dose atropine eye drops, orthokeratology, multifocal contact lenses, and progressive addition lenses, or as we like to call it in Australia, multifocal glasses. All of the above fall under the umbrella of what is known as myopia control, which is a field of study that is dedicated to slowing down the worsening of vision. And I believe that in the near future, myopia control is going to play a huge role in preserving eyesight. There are too many details on myopia control for me to cover in this video, so I'm planning to do a separate one that highlights from start to finish what you can do to slow down myopia, so subscribe if you don't want to miss that. But as always, if you learned something new, or at least found something useful, then yay, thumbs up to you. If you want to thumbs up back, then they'll be greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.